Welcome back. You're still watching SABC News Channel. This is the full view. A quick short sports bulletin, as it were. Remember earlier today, the South African cricket, well, cricket South Africa anyway, announced a 15-man cricket team that will be taking part to the Cricket World Cup out in England as well as Wales. Joining us from our studios in Port Elizabeth is our in-house cricket analyst and cricket commentator right here at SABC News, Mlulege Nsabu. Mlulege, welcome to SABC News Channel. I know it's been a busy day in as far as, well, the sport is concerned. Today, we finally got the names of the men that will represent us a bit later on this year. What is your take of the squad? Finally, uh, Tabi, so we've been waiting for the announcement, but in the end, I do not think there's a lot of surprises, though. Uh, we've seen all of the gentlemen that were picked, uh, the 15-man squad that is traveling to the UK. But my personal preference, and when I looked at the, all the performers, there's someone who is a little bit unlucky, in my opinion, I think, uh, Riza Hendricks, who mm -hmm. seemed to have missed out as well. But they, uh, I think the last five games or so, while he was playing for South Africa, he didn't really cover himself in glory. But um, I would have liked to see him uh, uh, going there as well. Mm. Interestingly as well, the name of Hashim Amla, a lot of people are thinking he might not make the squad, but as you saw, it happened and he's in there. Yeah, no, no, I think if you look at the record, um, I think uh, Hashim Amla has done his time. Uh, he deserves to be in, in, in that team. Uh, his record with Quinton de Kock as an opening pair is really outstanding and probably one of the best in the world. And uh, he's got the average of uh, just above 45 in the UK in white ball cricket. Mm -hmm. So they, that was no brainer for the selectors, I think. Uh, also, with a bit of experience, he's been uh, with the South African team for a very long time. So he's got that calm effect despite having not scored so many runs across all formats uh, the entire year, which was a, a bit of a concern. But I just think, um, as they say, class is permanent. So we're just hoping that he comes through. Mm. The nice thing about you mentioned the likes of, uh, well, the young players that we have saw in the MSL, some of them, you know, cover themselves in glory. JP Dermody, good to see him back. The consistency of that man alongside Hashim Lamla, as you just mentioned. It's a tricky balance, isn't it? Trying to get the new faces, the, well, the future of South African cricket and the old faces, if I can call it that way, the JPs and Hashim, to finally, I mean, how do you get over that quarter final line and actually do, well, I think fight for, for, for the World Cup in itself? Um, uh, you're talking about a mix uh, in the South African selection mm. team. Uh, I think you're going to need those guys and as the tournament progresses. I mean, it's a long tournament, two months of action. Uh, people like JP Dumini, they've been there for uh, South Africa, Hashim Amla as well. He, he's played a new role, it seems, as if uh, uh, J.P. Dumini coming back from a long layoff and uh, now playing that uh, finishes role, especially at uh, uh, position number five and six. And I think it's going to be crucial to have him in the side. He also helps with the ball. Uh, should things not go well in terms of uh, how the South Africans would have planned, maybe going with a uh, one leg spinner, which we all know that him and Tahir here mid overs, mm -hmm. and he could complement one or two of the all rounders in the setup of the South African team. And for Hashim Amla, as I said, I, I really don't have any worries about him. Yeah. Um, after the World Cup, then you can phase out those players that you're talking about and get those new uh, young ones that are coming through the system. Mm. You mentioned this with the bowling, uh, you know, uh, well, the bowlers, as it were. It's good to see the likes of, of, of Imran. I mean, he's always probably one of the best bowlers. Strike rates is a strike bowler, as a spinner. He works wonders for the protests. A lot of people will be, well, raising their eyebrows saying, geez, what does it bring to the party? But he's quite important as well as Tabai Shamsi as well. That mix could, you know, turn things around. I know South Africa, we don't always depend on spin bowling, but it looks like those two, I mean, the way they've been bowling over the past couple of months, uh, are a good pick. Yeah, it's also about the good time where Imran Tahir is uh, towards the end of his career. And we all, we all know that at the end of the World Cup, that probably would be it for him in terms of the 50 overs game. And uh, we'll uh, probably focus on the T20s. But to have someone like Shamsi who is coming through her lane a thing or two um, on the tour uh, in that tournament, and also it would be good to have uh, one of the games uh, to have two spinners that are playing in, and bowling in tandem mm -hmm. as well. So um, I'm looking to... Uh, 
look forward to see that combination between those two. And I think South Africa, they've uh, picked uh, well when it comes to the bowlers. I'm a little worried if I look at the squad and I have a long analysis when it comes yeah. to their first 11, and maybe a tail will be a little bit too long, and I, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's just because I look at the New Zealand teams, English teams, Australian teams who seem to have uh, uh, people that can bet until number 9 and 10. So South Africa seem to have uh, little uh, deficiency when it comes to that. Yeah, I'm Lulegi. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Give me a bit of insight in as far as what your thoughts are with South Africa's 15-man squad taking us to the World Cup, and hopefully we'll have you back again and we go deeper into it because I'd like to touch on some of the aspects of that conversation. Lulegi and Sabo joining us from our Port Elizabeth studios there.